How's it going guys, Chris here and welcome to another Battlefield 5 weapon guide. Today we're going to be checking out the FG42 for the support class, a pretty fast firing German rifle that you'll be able to unlock at support rank 16. During the Battle of Crete, aka Operation Mercury, German paratroopers dropped armed with pistols and grenades, so not exactly a lot of firepower. They did have access to SMGs, rifles and other small arms, but these were all packaged up in containers and dropped down separately, which the paratroopers would then have to find on the ground. Because their equipment was scattered around on the battlefield, this meant that a lot of German troops were really vulnerable when they landed, with many of them getting gunned down by defending forces, leading to a hell of a lot of casualties during the early stages of the battle. This was a clear indication that Germany really needed a viable weapon with a decent power output, lightweight enough to be carried safely during paratrooper drops. So not long after, in 1941, the Luftwaffe requested for a select fire rifle to suit this role. This proposed weapon was intended to be a game changer, potentially designed to replace all bolt action rifles, SMGs and LMGs for use in airborne assaults, simplifying logistics while providing more firepower. And out of a few prototype weapons put up for trials, the FG42 turned out to be the winner. It was a select fire, air-cooled gun that used 10 or 20 round box magazines slotted into its side, chambered for the 8mm Mauser cartridge. Essentially a very portable LMG with similar features to a modern day assault rifle. Throughout its life cycle, the FG42 went through quite a lot of redesigns, due to the supply of materials to build it and due to the desire to further develop it. But in this time, several German factories had been bombed to bits by Allied planes, so weapons had to be produced in smaller numbers with lower quality materials. This meant that the FG42, although originally envisioned to be Germany's number one paratrooper weapon, supplied to most airborne forces, was actually only produced and deployed in limited numbers in the end. Deemed to be one of the most advanced weapons of World War II, but an expensive, exclusive one, which never made its way into many hands and never really got a chance to reach its full potential. So anyway, how does the FG42 fit into Battlefield 5? Well, as far as the power goes, it dishes out a pretty standard amount of damage, dealing 25 up to 10 meters, and then from this point, that damage is going to slope down over distance, as you'd naturally expect. It's going to keep on dropping until your bullet reaches the 75 meter mark, where it'll deal the minimum damage of 15. And because of the way the figures fall, this basically means that you're going to be able to kill in just 4 shots in close quarters, but it could take up to 7 if the other guy's beyond the range of 50 meters. This is pretty similar to most of the other light machine guns, so individual bullet damage isn't really going to seem too out of the ordinary, and this goes for those headshot values as well, with the gun being able to kill in one less shot whenever you can hit your target in the head. The thing that is a little bit different though that is going to impact its lethality is of course that rate of fire, which is actually a tad faster than most of the others at 670 RPM. It can still be beaten by the BAR along with a lot of the SMGs in the medic class, so in close quarters, although it can be very deadly, it's still got quite a bit of competition in those offensive ranges. But this faster than average fire rate combined with an otherwise fairly decent LMG power output definitely gives the gun more aggressive qualities within short to mid ranges. The FG42's kill times are a lot snappier than average, especially when you compare it to a few of the other support weapons with slower fire rates, like the Bren gun and Type 11 for example. So when you take power into consideration, I guess you could say that this is one of the gun's strongest factors, making it ideal for pushing forwards, playing the objective and generally assaulting the enemy head on. Looking at the recall stats next, we can see that the FG42 has got a vertical kick value of 0.76, which just so happens to be one of the highest figures in the class, matching up with the BAR. With the gun also shooting at a pretty nippy speed too, recoil is going to stack up a little bit quicker as a result, so you can expect the FG42 to drift upwards more than normal if you're holding down the trigger and firing in longer bursts. This isn't exactly good news for the gun stability, as it'll probably seem harder to manage against targets beyond close range, and it might mean that you'll need to tap and burst your shots into smaller groupings to keep it under control. But unlike the BAR, the FG42 does have access to the recoil buffer, 
which is going to lower that kick down to a value of about 0.61, putting it much more in line with the Lewis gun, probably making it feel easier to use against targets further away over those medium ranges. The FG42 has got two different figures for its horizontal recoil, having a leftwards kick value of 0.22 and a higher rightwards kick value of 0.28, so this pattern's not the worst in the class, giving it a higher degree of accuracy over the BAR, but it will probably mean that your line of fire might often seem to stray more so to the right, sometimes impacting precision. Though just like with the vertical recoil, the horizontal recoil can be lowered through specialisations, should you choose the ported barrel instead of the recoil buffer and this will make it a bit more accurate, often allowing more shots to land on target over a slightly further distance. The FG42 has not exactly got brilliant recoil figures overall when compared to the other LMGs, so this can usually make it feel less effective for longer range fights, but at least it does have quite a few specialisations to help reduce these figures, putting it more in line with the others. Plus it's also got a built-in bipod attachment too, which can help you out whenever you use the gun from stationary positions, behind some cover. When it comes to reliability, the FG42 is a bit of a funny one, because it's got a few factors that both go for and against it. Probably the most obvious thing to point out is the fact that it's got a 20 round magazine, not exactly a good thing considering the gun shoots so quickly, so you're going to be very limited with what you can do and how many enemies you can comfortably take on at a time. Most light machine guns typically have bigger magazines than this, giving them more suppressive power, and because the FG42 has not exactly got great accuracy stats, more shots are likely to miss, making those small magazines even less dependable, especially when taking on players over mid to long distances, where you'll need to land more bullets to kill. These smaller than average mags are also going to be a bit of a detriment when playing within closer distances too, where the FG42 is generally designed to perform at its best, which is a little bit counterintuitive for aggressive play, as you'll be putting yourself at risk more often. But to make up for this, the FG42 has got some of the swiftest reload speeds in the class, so although you'll be running out of ammo quite a lot, at least you'll be able to get back into the action faster than normal, cutting down periods of vulnerability. The gun's got a tactical reload time of 2.25 seconds, the quickest of all the LMGs, and it's also got an empty reload time of 3.45 seconds, which isn't the fastest, but it's not too far off, still giving it a nippier speed than average. You can't cut down these times with the FG42 not having access to the quick reload specialisation, but nevertheless, these times are still going to allow the gun to exceed within hostile territory, providing you use cover to your advantage and play smart when you're under pressure, with it sometimes being risky to use in situations where you're surrounded. Looking at the specialisations next, the FG42 has got access to the quick aim spec at the top left, speeding up the aim down size time, and the custom stock at the top right, reducing spread whilst moving around. Because it's a pretty aggressive weapon, I tend to prefer using the quick aim spec, which is going to give you a little bit more of a competitive edge in one-on-one -on -one gunfights with other players, by letting you get down those sights faster, potentially helping to cut down kill times. Most of the time, you'll be using the FG42 while playing the objective and rushing your enemy's position, so a lot of the players you'll be up against will be within a close to medium range. The custom stock might help the gun feel slightly more accurate when moving around, which can also be a good thing within CQC, but because there's quite a few other guns in the game with faster fire rates and quicker kill times in shorter ranges, quick aim is just going to make the FG42 feel a bit more competitive within the gun's optimal engagement range. Further down the specialisation tree, the FG42 has got access to the enhanced grips and recoil buffer on the left side, lowering hip fire spread and reducing some of that upwards kick. And on the other side, it's got the barrel bedding and ported barrel, lowering spread while standing still and making the gun a bit more accurate by reducing some of its horizontal sway. Although a lot of you guys will probably prefer to run down the left side to reduce that vertical recoil value, I generally prefer to do the opposite and go for the ported barrel instead. The recoil buffer might seem like an ideal fit with the FG42, with it drifting upwards more than normal, but because it's a gun that's designed to be used closer to the action, and because that upwards kick can be countered by firing in shorter bursts, the gun stability issues won't cause too many problems most of the time, so long as you use it properly. So this gives us more of a reason to go down the right side of the tree instead, and pick the barrel bedding and ported barrel, which are always going to come in handy, 
and prevent as many shots straying off target in pretty much all situations. Last of all, the FG42 is one of the only support guns that's got access to the bayonet, which you'll see on the left side at the bottom, and on the right it's got the light and stock, letting you strafe around a bit quicker while aiming. Because I barely ever tend to use the bayonet in Battlefield 5, and because the gun's fire is already effective enough to take care of people in CQC, I tend to opt for the light and stock, which goes pretty well for strafing in and out of cover in close quarters. Though the bayonet might be useful in some cases, mainly if you run out of bullets in your 20 round magazine, and quickly need to kill someone close by who's probably going to take you down otherwise. So, in conclusion, the FG42 is one of the support class's more dynamic light machine guns that's typically best used with gung-ho playstyles. It fares a lot better than quite a few of the others within dangerous territory, fitting into aggressive tactics quite nicely, due to its quicker than average fire rate and decent bullet damage, translating over to some pretty competitive kill times, being able to comfortably rival weapons from other classes that are typically designed to excel closer to the fight, with the FG42 also performing most effectively within close to mid ranges. Where a lot of other LMGs would struggle to take players down quickly near objective points, the FG42 fits into an assault styled role quite nicely, but it's still troubled by a few things that'll not only limit its use over further distances, but will also limit how dependable it can be within dangerous situations too. With it only having a mag size of 20 rounds, you'll be throwing yourself into a lot of awkward situations, often being able to take care of a couple of enemies fine enough, but urgently needing more ammo not long after, to deal with any more that might be hanging around. Thankfully, this limitation is offset by the gun having some pretty snappy reload times, getting you back into the action quicker and allowing you to keep on going, so although you'll constantly be required to reload as you play aggressively, at least you won't be out of the fight for too long, supporting the FG42's offensive role even more. It just means you might need to duck in and out of cover a bit more often if you want to survive in between those mag swaps, playing smart and keeping an eye out for things that can block sight lines as you reload. The FG42 doesn't exactly have the best accuracy stats in the game, meaning quite a few bullets are likely to stray off target when you open fire, but so long as you're sticking within close to mid ranges, it shouldn't really cause too many problems most of the time. It's a pretty unstable weapon, so you'll probably need to tap and burst fire a bit to stay on target, especially if your enemy's a bit further away. But all in all, most of its stats promote forceful use, having a lot of power against players nearby, and providing you play to its strengths, while staying aware of its limited ammo capacity, it can be a very effective weapon, being able to do things that most of the other LMGs simply aren't capable of. So that's it for another one guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to stay updated with new ones and apply all notifications to be the first to do so. Thanks for watching, I'll be seeing you in that next episode.